have a seat. So recently I've been thinking about my journey as a creator, considering how it's like just starting. And I know I haven't been here in a minute, don't clock me. Just bear with me, okay? So I've been trying to figure out what I'm doing with my whole creative life. And lately I've been feeling just a little bit uninspired. I've been feeling like I have zero motivation to do anything and this doesn't even just go for YouTube. This goes for like picture taking on my Instagram, um, choreography and photography and all the things that I want to do with my little creator life. I have been so uninspired and I think I found the source of um, the thing that is currently sucking all of my creative energy into a little jar and sealing it tight for all of eternity. Or at least that's just what it feels like. <laughs> that thing we're talking about is called the beautiful state of Pennsylvania. Now hold on a minute. I'm not saying that all people that are creative in Pennsylvania are struggling like the way I am. But as you can see from the title of this video, I moved from New York City. This is a place where things are always going on. The hustle and bustle is constantly happening. Things pre-virus didn't really close very often. Like things were running 24 seven. And about three and a half years ago, I moved to PA. Now I know what you're thinking. Three years ago, Asia, that's a long time to get your together. But hear me out. It's been a snowball effect of no motivation and indecisiveness in all the little things that start to turn into me not doing much with my creative being. Coming from New York and being a content creator, like a photographer, a videographer, or a dancer and a singer like I was, it's a serious change of pace from farm living and cabin living. And as you can see, I'm currently living in a cabin, which it is a cute little cabin, but it's not New York. Anywho, as quaint and cute as it is, there are just some things that have been slowing down the process or pretty much just stunting me all together. Stunting my creative blossoming. Is that what I want to call it? So this is not exactly a story time. It's going to be like a informative videos for those of you who might be moving out of a really busy state like New York or LA or I can't really think of any other cities right now. But anyway, you're moving from the hustle and bustle to come and live a quiet life and you're wondering why your creative juices are being sucked from your very soul. I'm done rambling. I'm gonna get into it. Finally. So if you guys see me looking down, I have a little notebook here um, that I am using to keep track of the things that I'm talking about because this was one of those things that I wanted to actually write a list for and talk about with you guys. The first topic that I want to touch on is going to be the big changes and surprises that I got hit with moving into this state. The first thing being how far everything is from each other. This was the biggest shock out of everything else that I have witnessed here. I wanna go to Target, 35 minutes. To the nail salon, 35 minutes. To Walmart, 45 minutes. And this is, this once again, this might just be my situation because I am in the heart of the mountains in the Poconos. So we'll get into the talk about other parts of Pennsylvania later, but this is coming from my part of Pennsylvania. The next thing being how quiet it is out here. Being quiet was a huge shock to me. Not a shock like I didn't know it was coming, but a shock that didn't hit me until I was a part of it. It is quiet 95% of the time over here. You hear a bird chirping, you hear a deer knocking at your deck. Yes, I said a deer. You will hear the trees rustle every once in a while. Maybe a car just drives past your house so you hear some distant motor. But other than that, silent. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. It just was a serious change in the soundtrack of my life. The background noise of New York is different. Next on the list of things that shocked me the most when I first got here is the, the, 
lack of means of transportation. This part kills me the most. This is the this is the, the shock. This was the big, oh, I'm really not in New York City anymore. I went from taking the bus, the train, an Uber, whatever I could get my hands on to get somewhere, a bike, a scooter. I went from every other way of transportation to just driving. The only other form of transportation out here is the Pocono Pony. This bus is literally the slowest thing that's ever been invented. When a drive to Target takes 35 minutes, the bus will take three to four hours because it's stopping in every community on the way to wherever it is you have to go and then finally comes out of the communities and still has to drive slowly through traffic to get to where you're going. You're screwed if you're taking the Pocono Pony because you will never, and I mean never, get to wherever you've got to go. So this means that even if I really, really, really did not want to drive somewhere, I'd still be driving because I refuse to sit on a bus for that long. Moving topics, we're gonna go into the things that I absolutely love about Pennsylvania. I had to throw some good things in there because I was getting a little frustrated. One thing that I really love is the privacy. So we don't have anyone knocking at our door, there's no neighbors, there's nothing really going on that's going to make a sound and make you feel like you're right on top of somebody. So if I wanna blast loud music, I can do it without interrupting all of my neighbors. And it feels good to just be able to sit out on my own deck with my own chair and my own table and my own grill and just relax. So the privacy is a big plus. Moving right along, the next thing I'd like to talk about that I ended up loving while being out here is the farm animals. I know this sounds ridiculous and it sounds like I'm pulling at strings and at nothing. It's not that. I really truly have a new love for all of the animals that are out here. Sometimes there's a goat crossing the street. Other times it's a cow. Sometimes it's a cat, it's a deer. Sometimes a sheep will just waltz across the street like he's moving on to the next farm. And other times you run into things that are not so pleasant to run into like skunks bears, and the deer that unfortunately jump into the road. By the way, they're legitimately completely off the rails, but we'll talk about that later. The last thing that I'll talk about in my category of things that I love would be Walmart. It's Walmart, it is what it is. There's Walmarts everywhere, but out here, there is a Walmart in every part of Pennsylvania. So, in the middle of the night, if there's something that I need, I can go get it from Walmart. Next up, we have the category of things that I do not appreciate. I cannot stand how early everything closes. It sucks. If I leave my house at eight o'clock at night, the only thing that's gonna be open is the supermarket and Walmart. And although I just said it's really nice having a Walmart in all directions, it's really suckish when the only thing you can do for nightlife is Walmart. Moving right along. The next thing on the list of things that I do not appreciate would have to be the lack of culture. It's not like they shun you for being yourself, but everybody out here pretty much dresses the same. And when you look different, all eyes are on you and sometimes it's not in a good way. In New York, when I went to the movies, I would wear a cute dress or some nice heels and jeans or I would just do my hair and my makeup before I left the house. Just to go meet my friends on 42nd Street to go to the movies and relax and have fun. And yeah, my feet hurt by the end of the night, but who cares because I was cute and I enjoyed a movie. And besides, New York is like your own personal fashion show all the time. So everyone looks different and it's really cool to see that. In Pennsylvania, everybody, and I mean everyone, is in jeans, sweats, a loose fitting shirt, sandals, sneakers, a cap. And when I do dress up, I just feel super out of place and uncomfortable. There's not a whole lot of artwork around. There's not a lot of anything really when it comes to being out in the town. Although they do have some places that have artwork on the outside of their walls and stuff, it's not as bold and outspoken as New York is. 
The next thing on this list of things I do not appreciate would have to be that all the towns are really towns. Besides Philadelphia, there are no cities out here. Even Allentown and Lehigh Valley, which are like the most built up areas out here, are built up towns. They just look like towns. There are no skyscrapers. There are no huge, pretty buildings with glass windows. Everything is old brick, old houses, or new houses built, but mainly houses and things. And a lot of businesses are even run out of house looking buildings. This bothers me because I have zero variety in what I'm looking at and it's uninspiring. After looking at it a few times, it just becomes boring. And for me, New York never really became boring. The last thing that I'll mention on this list are the deer. I know I said I have a new appreciation for animals, but the deer are different. They jump out in the middle of traffic. They stare at you with these bright eyes while you're walking or driving or anything. And you sometimes you don't even know what it is. You just kind of have to take a guess and say, well, I hope that's a deer and not a bear. And a lot of the times they go into people's gardens. They eat all of their flowers, all their crops and everything else that you have back there. And just last week, I had a deer walk, hop, leap onto my deck to get some cat food that we put out for this sweet little cat that stops by every once in a while. And we didn't know what was outside of our door. Like we were looking like, what is that at the door? And we're looking at each other and we look back at the door and finally we see the head of the deer and we were like, oh my God, we thought it was a bear sitting on our deck. Thankfully it was just a deer, but also it's a deer. Like, come on, come on. So now we're gonna get into a little more of the meat and potatoes of the video. I'm talking about the impact that it's had on all of my career choices. If you're a dancer, a singer, a performer, a photographer, a videographer, whew, buckle up. Moving here really changed the way that I had to work and figure out how I was going to make money. When I first arrived, I thought I would be getting a job as a dance teacher at a studio and would just move on with my life. Maybe I wouldn't be performing, but at least I'd be teaching kids how to perform. Well, although that's possible here, it's not possible for everybody. And quite honestly, they're extremely selective about who they choose to work in their studios. And they really weren't hiring when I got out here at all. It's just the way the cookie crumbled. Even if you do get a job working with children, which is what I wanted to do regardless, whether I was dancing or not, I really wanted to work with kids. They only pay you $7 or $8 an hour to work with the literal future. These are the kids that are gonna grow up to be the dancers and the singers and the artists and the lawyers and the doctors and the teachers and are going to take our place someday and we get paid seven to eight dollars. I got lucky and I started working at a pre-K that was paying nine dollars. And even then, I ended up not staying there because it just broke my heart that they couldn't pay a little bit more for you to deal with two-year-olds and three-year-olds that need constant care. So with the lack of jobs um, for the things that I really wanted to do out here, I started searching for something else to do. Unfortunately, out here, most of the jobs are extremely generic. And by generic, I just mean the kind of jobs you possibly look over unless it's something you're really interested in. There are warehouse jobs, and I mean, there are a ton of them out here. That's the main thing that people go for. Jobs in retail, which is really just working at a mall security for schools and things like that. And then there's the hospitality area, which I ended up falling under. Now I've tried my hand at all of these professions except for the security. And honestly, nothing really felt like what I wanted to do with my life. So I continued to search for things that I would love to do like dance. In this search, I only found pre-K teachers to teach specific things like dance and art, or to teach part-time at a college where I make a very small amount of money over a long period of time with no benefits because it wasn't a credit class. On top of that, I wanted to stay up on my skills and I tried to work on them and I tried to find schools out here or dance studios that would take older people. Now I'm saying older as if I'm 30 and 40 years old. When I moved out here, I was 22. But unfortunately, there are no adult programs for anyone over the age of 18, which put me into my current situation. 
In New York, I always wanted to be a bartender part-time because I thought it was a really cool job. The nightlife was for me and everything was always fun behind the bar and in front of the bar. So when I came out here, I decided that the only route that I really wanted to take was to be a bartender. This was the only way that I could interact with other adults and have a great staff and enjoy making drinks for people and keeping everyone happy while still being happy. But it was just sad to say that that was the only option for me. I never really wanted bartending to be a full-time job for me because you never know how many tips you'll get in a day and you never know how much you'll end up with at the end of the week. But nonetheless, I ended up being a full-time bartender and now the supervisor of the place that I work, but I never got around to dancing or singing or performing. So how does this end up affecting you as a creator and a dancer if you're thinking of living out here? A lot of the time I end up uninspired. I end up unmotivated, bored, and doing the same things every day. It's not that I have to, there are other options of things to do out here like hiking and kayaking and a lot of fun things for the people that enjoy those things. And although I enjoy them, they're not what I want to spend my life doing all the time. This is really a vacation home area and even though people are moving out here, at this time there's just not much else to do. So as my day-to-day -day life becomes repetitive, I venture out to find other things to do like photography or videography and I usually end up in East Stroudsburg where there's a little more variety of life going on, but even then, I don't have as many options of things to take pictures of or to just enjoy the sight of. If you're coming out here and you're looking to rent a studio to do your own classes and things like that for dance, it's pretty hard because a lot of studios out here will not rent you a room. They're gonna ask you if you want to enroll in classes and if you're too old, they'll just kind of look at you stumped because most of the classes out here are for kids anyway and they're just not gonna rent you out a room because they need it for those classes. There is no Ripley Greer out here. There is no uh, Broadway Dance Center. So if you want to dance, you're better off just putting a studio directly in your basement. And I found this really awesome app called Peerspace that I thought was really gonna help me find a place to dance and to keep up with my skills. But come to find out, they didn't have any places out here. And it's not their fault, there's no one renting. So all of the places on Peer Space, I'd have to drive to in New York, in Jersey, in Philly, and maybe Maryland. But all of these places are a long ways from here. And I don't want to drive two hours to then pay for a studio for two hours, to go back home for two hours, and to just be beat and feeling sad and depressed anyway. And even being a content creator, sometimes I'm just here staring at four walls, or I go outside and I stare at four trees, and I always end up feeling like I should just go back inside and relax like everyone else out here is doing. So all in all, it's really not the best place for creators and photographers and dancers and singers and creative people unless you really love nature and incorporating that into those things. Maybe it's just not for me. Maybe I'm just a city girl. The last topic that I have for you guys is the not living in Philly topic. Yes, I made an entire topic for Philly. I've had so many people say to me, Philly is not a part of Pennsylvania. I even know people that thought that Philadelphia was a state and Pennsylvania was another state because the two places seem completely different. Everyone associates Pennsylvania with slow living, historical buildings, farms, tractors, countryside, mountain people. And honestly, that's what a lot of Pennsylvania is. If you're not in Philly or Pittsburgh or Lancaster, you're most likely never looking at big city buildings. So if you're not living in Philly, the living is slow. Philly is the only place where you'll get the constant diversity of art and people, tall buildings, short buildings, old buildings, new buildings, fun things to do like museums and wonder space, corner stores and all types of things. There's a lot to do over there. And if you're a creator, that's one of the best places to be because when you step out of your door, you see a variety of people. Now, if you're someone who is inspired by nature, inspired by hiking, and just really one of those people that loves to be in the middle of nowhere, no offense, then the rest of PA is yours for the taking. But for someone like me, who's just not really into country living, it's been really hard adjusting. I mean, 
really hard. In my opinion, Pennsylvania is kind of draining my creativity. People are comfortable living here and that's totally okay. But for me, things seem a little too stagnant and not enough is really going on. Would I move back to New York? I'm not sure. I think if given the right opportunity and making the right amount of money, I would definitely go back because I love it. It's a place where unique people can come together and be something even more unique. It's a place where dancers are comfortable, singers are comfortable, artists and creators, photographers, videographers can be themselves and not feel weird for standing out. So yeah, I think maybe I would if I had the means to. But New York is an expensive place and your girl ain't got the funds. In the end, there are other states that might have what I'm looking for. And maybe soon you guys will see me somewhere else. But this was basically just my little video and kind of a rant about the way that I feel about Pennsylvania. I'm sorry all you people that love it here. I wasn't trying to offend anybody, but it was a hard move. And it's been kind of hard adjusting, even after almost four years of being here. I hope that in the future, more people will move here and create more things to do. But in the meantime, I'm bored. All right, well, thank you guys for listening to me. We finally made it to the end and I'm feeling a little better getting back in front of the camera. Now that I've got a fire lit under me, I'm feeling like I can make some more videos and feel comfortable doing it because I got how I'm feeling out of the way and I figured out why I'm feeling that way. Once again, thanks for listening. I will see you guys next time.